Hello, assalamu alaikum and welcome to this, your Two White Muslim Show. It's Wednesday, it's six o'clock, which means that we have to start by doing this. Assalamu alaikum. Warakatullahi. Wabarakatuh. My name's Junaid Rahim. And my name's Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And together, we're affectionately known as... The Two White Muslims. We're joined as ever by our colleague and beloved brother Kosatai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And again, we have a very interesting topic, one that's often overlooked. This evening, we're going to consider how Islam views disabilities. You know, sadly, the, the majority of people still actually look at disability as, as something to be ashamed of mm. or to hide. Uh, something, even something to, to get rid of or, or to be ridiculed. Mm. Astaghfirullah. Now, uh, tragically, this includes many Muslims have these kinds of views. The wrong interpretations of religion shape the view of some Muslims on disability, which often leads to misconceptions and even discrimination against the disabled people. Mm. So since the beginning of Islam, at the, at the start of the seventh century, uh, the believers were advised by the Quran to recognize the plight of the disadvantaged and improve their condition and status. So, subhanAllah, Islam has always emphasized the need to care for people with special needs. Our beloved Prophet has said um, that we need to be merciful toward all people, including those with disability. The Quran teaches us, us that Muslims and human beings have created differently, which is the beauty of Allah's creation. Allah says in the Quran, and among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the difference of your tongues and colors. Surely in this there are signs of the persons having knowledge. Chapter 30, verse 22. You know, from an is Islamic perspective, disability is not a punishment. It's simply a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's there to help develop and maintain taqwa the fear of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously tests all of us. For Allah, all humans are equal and the only thing that makes one better than the other is the individual's consciousness of Allah and the individual's piety. Hmm. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for each of you we have made a law and a method had Allah willed, he would have made a single community of people, but he did not, so that he may test you in what he has given to you. Strive then to excel each other in good deeds. To Allah is the return for all of you. Then Allah shall tell you about that in which you disputed. This is the Quran, chapter 5, verse 48. We've said before, you know, uh, the mere fact that we are all different is amazing. There's no, you know, control C, control V in this one. There's no copy paste. It'd you know, be so boring. The world would be so would, boring, exactly. wouldn't it? Would exactly look like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd all like, oh, like, oh like, heaven so forbid. <laughs> so people will be tested in different the worst ways. Like me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, people will be tested in different <laughs> ways. Know. Yusuf is tested very differently <laughs> to us all. I'm tested very differently. But the course is tested very differently. Uh, Some people will be tested by their wealth. Others by unpleasant or, or even painful uh, experiences and others by their health such as disability whether that be physical or mental. I mean what's amazing is that way before the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities was enacted our beloved Prophet 1400 years ago over 1400 years ago advocated for the disability for the disabled community he وسلم, was the initiator and defender of disability rights. He ensured that people with disabilities were catered for and were given their rights and privileges, including the right to a normal life just like anyone else. Today, we've got the Disability Discrimination Act, which is part and parcel of the Equalities Act 2010. But just imagine, we've got that now, 2010, and also we've got the United Nations Convention on Disabilities, uh, which was enacted much earlier. But 1400 years ago, subhanAllah, the disabled people have rights in Islam and we are required to treat them equally as anybody else, subhanAllah. It, it's as if Allah knows us, mm, subhanAllah. Course. A little better than we of know ourselves. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you know, our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa transformed the lives of disabled people 
by teaching society that there were no stigmas or bad attitudes towards those uh, people with disabilities. He emphasised that disability itself cannot affect individuals if they have strong iman. Hmm. He reassured the disabled that their disabilities are not a punishment, but in fact they are a means for their sins to be forgiven. Subhanallah, hmm. subhanallah. So when you see somebody with disability, uh, yeah, d instead of uh, d d seeing them as, as unfortunate, in, in some respects, they're clearly not, because every single hour of every day, their sins are being expiated. Mm -hmm. And they'll arrive back to Allah in, a, in a, a, a different state to the way that ordinary people will arrive back to Allah. So just imagine Allah. Islam sees, sees these people in a fortunate way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In a blessed way. Yeah. This is completely counterintuitive as mm -hmm. we see today. Mm -hmm. But subhanAllah, they are the blessed people, as mm -hmm. it were. In fact, in a hadith, narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Qudri and Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No fatigue, nor disease, nor sorrow, nor sadness, nor hurt, nor distress befalls a mu Muslim, even if it were the prick he receives from a thorn, but that Allah expiates some of his sins for that. And this is recorded in Bukhari. So just imagine, of all the difficulties and inconveniences a person with disabilities experiences, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expiating their sins all the while. SubhanAllah, we should consider this, as you rightly say, Brother Corsa, to be a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just imagine, and this hadith is a very famous hadith. A lot of people quote this mm. regularly. But just imagine, do we ever see it in the context of people with disability, mm. who are experiencing sadness and, and uh, sorrow and also inconveniences, for yeah. example. If they are disabled, if they are able to walk, if they are on a wheelchair, mm. or if they got mental faculties not functioning, mm -hmm. Just imagine, they are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala experiences their sins. Our beloved Prophet gave the disabled people a higher self-esteem and erased their sadness, misery and lack of confidence. He reminded them that verily Allah does not look at your appearance or wealth, but rather He looks at your hearts and actions. I'll just repeat that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what the Prophet said, does not look at your appearance as to how good you look mm -hmm. or how much money you have but rather he looks at your hearts and your actions what's in your qalb what's in your heart is what's mm -hmm. important subhanallah and this is recorded in muslim the uh, prophet peace be upon him stood for human rights and he abolished discrimination based on disability which was in fact prevalent during pre-islamic times he for example appointed one of his companions by the name of abdullah Ibn Umm Maktoum, he was blind. The Prophet, peace be upon him, appointed him to call the Azan and asked him to lead the city of Medina when the Prophet had to travel outside. SubhanAllah. As far as the Prophet, peace be upon him, was concerned, Abdullah's blindness was not an obstacle to his ability to carry out his responsibilities. Through this example, the Prophet taught humanity that disabled people should not be looked down on or belittled because even though they have certain disabilities, they are capable of performing good actions and contributing to society. Mm. <clears throat> Once while the Prophet, peace be upon him, was speaking to a prestigious group of the Quraysh, hoping that they would become Muslim and that their acceptance of Islam uh, would bring greatness to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthen his mission, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, the same blind companion, came and began asking the Messenger of Allah about something of urgency. The Prophet frowned and turned away from uh, him in order to continue to have the conversation with the elite group of the Quraysh, because Abdullah distracted the Prophet from his focus on the Quraysh. Upon this action of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses, he frowned and turned away because there came to him the blind man. This is in the Quran, chapter 80, verse 1 and 2. These verses were revealed to the Prophet to reprimand him for his actions towards a blind person. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, frowned, Abdullah could not see this as he was blind. After this event, the Prophet, peace be upon him, changed his attitude towards the blind man to the extent that he would give the blind man extra respect and honour whenever they would see each other. When he met uh, Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, 
the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, Welcome, Abdullah, for whom Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reprimanded me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. <laughs> this is incredible. You know, wow. getting the sharp edge of your mum's tongue is bad enough, but it, I mean, when, when it, Allah reprimands when Allah you. directly this and, is just and puts sublime. it in the Quran, so sublime. But just imagine reprimanding our beloved Prophet yep. because of this. Just yes. imagine how when we treat people. You know, very. I mean, the Prophet didn't treat, treat him in a negative way. Mm. He just frowned. But even then, yeah, he was reprimanded by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, what about yeah. us, who purposefully yeah. um, discriminate against people who are disabled Incredible. or blind or whatever it might be? I mean, the other hadith you mentioned earlier, um, Brother Yusuf, uh, about um, you know not looking at the disability as a disadvantage. I am giving an, here. This is an example for employers who might want to recruit people who have. Disability, but who are able to do the work that they can, you know, positively try to encourage people to apply for jobs that they can easily do uh, with the, with merits, not mm -hmm. because of their disability. Yeah. And you'll be rewarded for it, inshallah. And a person who is disabled, make every effort to seek for work mm -hmm. if you're able to do that kind of particular work, whichever that you can do. Mm -hmm. That hadith gives us that example in today's society. Subhanallah. One of his, one of his uh, best companions was uh, Jalebi who was deformed in appearance and in short in, health, in height. While Jubeb was shunned by society because he was discriminated against and he was ridiculed as a consequence of his shortness mm. and because of, of the fact that he was not looking very uh, attractive, mm -hmm. our beloved Prophet ﷺ befriended him and he took care of him and raised his dignity. Um, and one day he said, this man is from me and I am from him. So just imagine our beloved Prophet mm -hmm. specifically chose him and said, this person is from me and I am from him. The Prophet's humane gesture toward the disabled was a powerful demonstration of the principle of inclusion. You know, we talk about inclusion so much, so much in society today. <coughs> Diversity, equality and inclusion. Here, this is being described in a, in a profound way 1400 years ago, mm -hmm. subhanAllah. You know, our Prophet, peace be upon him, also made it easy for those who were not able to, for example, perform their daily prayers while standing. He said, well, perform them sitting down. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to do that, then perform them lying down, subhanAllah. The Prophet also said, the one who recites the Qur'an with difficulty, stammering or stumbling through its verses like me and Janae and me <laughs> <laughs> would have twice the reward of those who recite perfectly subhanallah high five <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so while today people with disabilities are often taken as as a stuff object of amusement mockery mm. fun and the, the, the our beloved prophet peace be upon him um, prohibited people from mocking those with disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, thus elevating the ranks of disabled people. His companion, Abdullah ibn Masud, who was also one of the best interpreters of the Quran, was a weak man with a small physical structure. Once ibn Masud climbed a tree and some other companions laughed because they saw ibn Masud's tiny legs. The wind blew and made him fall over, so people again laughed at him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, what are you laughing at? They said, O Prophet of Allah, he has tiny shins. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, By the one in whose hand is my soul, they will both be heavier on the scale than the mountain of a hood. This is uh, recorded by Ahmad. This hadith taught people not to laugh or mock one another, particularly when it comes to physical appearance. He reminded us that men and women are not defined by their disabilities, but rather by their actions and contributions to society. Our beloved Prophet is indeed a source of inspiration for all of us to help us advocate for those who, are, who have disabilities. He called the people to relieve others from hardship. He said that whoever removes difficulties in people's lives in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove his difficulties or her difficulties in the hereafter. He also called the entire society to follow his example in taking care of those with special needs by promising that you were given your sustenance and victory for the virtues of those who are weak amongst you. And this is recorded in Abu Dawood. Such were the Prophet's treatment of those with disabilities which should be wake of call <coughs> for us all 
Muslims should show more care and love towards our brothers and sisters whom Allah has blessed with disabilities. Just imagine, we're seeing it in a, in a completely different light. Who Allah we're has blessed with disabilities. SubhanAllah, just imagine. Wow, wow what, a, what, a, what a profound statement mm -hmm. that is, SubhanAllah. So let's take a look then at the, the rights of disabled people within Islam. Okay, so in Islam, disabled people uh, have the right to be respected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have believed, let not a people ridicule another people. Perhaps they may be better than them. And this is the Quran, chapter 49, verse 11. Integrating disabled people into society is crucial in regard to their emotional and mental well-being. For successful integration, it encourages to have empathy and a sense of care for each other and to treat disabled people as being part and parcel of our society. Therefore, Islam grants them rights while assisting them in all of their needs. Hmm. So once a woman who usually had epileptic fits came to the Prophet and said, I, I do have fits and as a result, they cause part of my body to be revealed. So pray to Allah for me. To this came the reply of the Prophet, peace be upon him, if you will, be patient and paradise will be your reward. And if you will, I shall supplicate Allah to cure you. She said, I choose patience. Alhamdulillah. Then she said, but parts of my body to be revealed, so do pray to Allah that this at least will not happen. And the Prophet prayed for her. And this is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. Subhanallah. Wow. Subhanallah. What a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what how do we... What an attitude of yeah. I've got to say. Hey. What an attitude. <coughs> so a patience or a cure? Here we go. I'll, I'll go with patience. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Because the <laughs> I'll have patience, please. Because yeah. we need to be reminded uh, this uh, world is short. Yeah. This world is so minute. Uh, where the Prophet said, uh, uh, it's just like as if you put the yeah. finger into the ocean, the drop that comes out, that's the time that you're here on this earth. Mm -hmm. So this woman chose that she'd be <coughs> patient for this small type of time of period mm -hmm. that we're going to be in this world and chose paradise. But then she still asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to pray for her because of her, uh, the fact that her uh, uh, clothing was um, revealing uh, in terms of when the wind comes, SubhanAllah. So how do we raise children with, uh, children with disabilities? What does Islam say about raising children with disabilities? And we're talking about not only physical disabilities but also uh, children with mental health or mental illness or autism or ADHD, etc., etc. Those are all forms of disabilities. Mm -hmm. So being a parent is tough. Being a parent with a child with special needs is especially tough. Mm. The spectrum of disability is very diverse. I mean, the whole spectrum of autism is, is huge, it's, mm. it's wide. It's mild and there's this extreme. Uh, simply stated, a disability is an impairment. It can be something as slight as visual impairment <coughs> or as severe as paralysis. <coughs> it's to that extent. And disabilities can be divided into cognitive development, which is the, the mind, uh, intellectual, physical, sensory, or a combination of any of these. The symptoms and onset vary from individual to individual. Some disabilities like autism and ADHD and Down syndrome commence in childhood and dominate in many cases throughout one's life. It's really, really, really important that we bear in mind here and remember that having a disabled child is not a way of Allah punishing the parents for their sins. That's just not the case. As absurd as it might sound, it still remains a deep-rooted belief in the minds of many people mm. that that is the case. It is not the case. It's certainly not a burden upon the parents. Allah says in the Quran, Allah does not burden a soul greater than what it can bear. This is the Quran, chapter 2, verse 186. Mm. But how can <coughs> a parent see any child as, as being a, a burden and Allah's punishing them? Mm. With I don't think it's always the parents that see that. I think it's other people yeah, absolutely. that mm. see that and judge that and have the yeah. something to say it. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm. Yes. The face. The face. To say it. To say <coughs> it. My <coughs> goodness. <coughs> yep. Um, children before they reach the age of puberty, the mentally ill or adults who have a learning disability are not accountable on the day of judgment. 
the divine pen for them has been lifted. This is stressed in the Hadith wherein Ali, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the messenger of, Allah, messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the pen has been lifted from three, the sleeping person until he wakes, the child until he becomes a young adult, and the feeble-minded until he gains intellect. This is recorded in Tirmidhi. So children are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no amount of disability or deformity can alter this fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wealth and children are but the adornment of the worldly life. This is recorded in the Quran, chapter 18, verse 86. So let's talk about some of the tips for caring for a disabled child. First and foremost, accept their disability as well as their abilities. Remember, everyone has abilities. And if there is a disability, there's always abilities as well. When caring for a child with a physical or mental disability, it's important that you do not only focus on their disabilities, but things that they can do as well. This will make the job more manageable and keep your spirits up. Understanding their disability allows you to take precautions for tasks your children cannot do, but it also provides the space to nurture what they can do. Celebrate the achievements and the heights. No matter how small they are, they still have a significant impact on your child's well-being. So this means, for example, every person has been given the ability by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if they make 100% of an effort, Allah looks at the effort, not at the outcome, because Allah has only given that certain percentage of the ability. But if they're giving the 100%, Allah looks at the pursuit of doing something. So with, with a disabled child, that's even more important. Because as we know, a person who, a child who's got autism, for example, they might be 10 years of age, but they might be functioning of a, of a five-year-old. So we have to take that into account, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. You know, a friend of the, the, the family um, has uh, a autistic son. Uh, his name is Arnold, and he's uh, nine years old. And uh, he's one of the most loving and caring, lo lovely children I have ever met. Mm. In spite of him uh, uh, finding massive difficulty understanding even basic things mm. and being able to communicate even basic things he's just a loving soul he's a beautiful soul <laughs> and I've really enjoyed having to uh, look after him from time to time uh, all he ever wants to do is to go and look in curries at washing machines <laughs> which is fine but he loves washing machines and then he needs to go to McDonald's I'm, I'm choosing different for him at yeah, the moment. Yeah. But all he wants to do is go to McDonald's where he gets two large fries and a Coke Zero. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's and him happy. That's him it? happy. That's it. SubhanAllah. This is not a burden. Mm. Yeah? And he's a beautiful child. So we'll discuss more of this after this short break, inshallah. inshallah. 